PWCC is a great way to sell your sports cards. If you're looking for a way to support the Cajun Cardboard YouTube channel, consider using the promo code CAJUN, all caps, C-A-J-U-N, when you're selling your cards on the PWCC marketplace. Brian with Cajun Cardboard coming at from the great state of Louisiana. I've got Coach Picks back due to popular demand. We're talking only about what's happening in the NBA. This is going to be, you know, we used to do NBA past and present. We're just doing NBA present today. we got three big topics. We do. And um, I think the first one is going to be, um, it's one different than we've ever we've ever talked about before, which is the tell likely us the topics. You tell us the topics because here's the deal. Jonathan, have we not done videos in the past and like we, we prepare and then we show up and we're like, that's not what we were supposed to be prepared for. Correct. We're yeah. on the same page this time, but why don't you share with the viewers and the listeners what our, uh, what our three topics are today? Cause they're broad, man. They're broad topics. They are broad and we're going to have to do a better job than we typically do of kind of narrowing it down. I think because we yeah. will, uh, we will ramble a little bit, but um, these are these are three huge topics uh, for sure. The first one is the likelihood of which teams are going to or which team will win each conference. Um, specific focus on the West, because we feel like that one's a little more wide open, yep. which we'll get to um, where we actually attach percentages, percentage percentages. Chance yes. To yes. Each team. Uh, then we're going to we're going to give our first, second and third all NBA teams uh, based on. The fact that there is it's positionless now. Complete. It's not even it's not even backcourt front court. It's just positionless, and the sixty five game uh, minimum that uh, each player has to reach as well. And then the last thing we will give are our top storylines heading into the playoffs that we feel like actually have a chance to happen. They can't be um, completely unrealistic, even the though best realistic narratives like th- yep. if this happens then this has a overarching massive sweeping effect maybe on the nba and how things change going forward right. but also where people players specifically or maybe even teams where teams or players rank historically uh like uh huge shifts right. in per- public perception right? right the most but only realistic like we're not like DeJounte Murray leads the Hawks to the NBA title, you know, right. over LeBron James and the Lakers. Like, th- yes, right. would that be cr- – I'm not cussing, by the way. I'm not – I'm going to stop cussing. I got to do oh, better. That's a thing. Okay. Yeah, All it's right. a thing. I'm going I'm to try to do my best. So, okay. um, <laughs> that would be really impressive and unique, but it's not realistic, right? So, we're talking about realistic narratives. The cussing. So, the cussing? Yeah. No cussing. No, no, no. But you said, is the cussing what's not realistic? Uh, that's also, we'll see how realistic it is. Okay. We'll do our best. We'll see what kind of willpower, uh, I can, I can show. Hold on. Let me pull one more thing up here. Uh, that's what she said. I can still do that. That's fair. That's fair. Absolutely. Yeah. No doubt. Yeah. You can be inappropriate. Uh, because, I wanted to yeah. pull this. Okay. Okay. Cool. We're good. All right. I got all kinds of stuff set up and ready to rock and roll. Um, all right. So let's get going. Topic number one, right? Let's just start here. There's nothing to screen share here. Uh, let's do East first because it's easy. Let's just do the East first. And, and yep. you have a tendency. I know you're going to allege the same of me, but you have a tendency to um, – what's the word? I don't want to say exaggerate, but, like, I, I'm going to go ahead and guess. You're going to say the Celtics have a 99% chance to win the East or something preposterous like that. You're going to do it. I know you are. So just go ahead and share your percentages. Uh, you do I'll yours give, first. I'll give them 90%. I'm giving them 90% chance. Okay. Okay. And – now again, let's let's preface this with we're assuming health across the board for everyone, okay? Because of course, yes, yes, okay. yes. So I'm I'm giving them ninety percent. Um, I am giving the Bucks eight percent. Interesting. And I will never again not give the Miami Heat eight <laughs> percent. So I'm giving me one percent, and then pull me eight times. Shame on me. And then Philadelphia, <laughs> the other one percent. Okay, you hit ninety percent, eight percent bucks, one and one for six. Okay, so I'm not far off. Okay, <laughs> I am, I am gonna uh, take the bait, and I am not including the Miami Heat in my percentages. Oh, okay, all right. <laughs> I, I do think there's only three th- three teams that can do it. Um, I, I would, um, I would throw a bone to the New York Knicks if Randall was healthy and Ananobi was healthy because they've been so damn good without those guys. And um, 
I probably – it may come back to bite me if the Cleveland Cavaliers make a run to the conference finals. I guess it's possible, but I don't know if those dudes can beat the damn Knicks without those two players because they got their butts whipped last year. So here's my percentages. Celtics, 85%. Uh, Bucks, 10%. And who I've lost to, let's see, the Wizards and then last night the Grizzlies with no one playing except Jaron Jackson Jr. Uh, and then I got the Sixers at 5%. So I go 85, 10, and 5. I don't think anybody else can do it. Um, and, uh, I, you know, Embiid came back and looked really good. He did. Uh, so he hasn't played with Buddy Heald yet. And it'll be interesting to see. They get they need D'Anthony Melton back, I think, right, who's been out for a bit. And he was actually a really big part of that starting five that was murdering people. So, um, you know, I'm not a full-time believer in a beat. I don't think you can miss that much time. It's not like a wrist injury where he could have been riding the bike or doing cardio or, you know, jumping around. I mean, he had a leg injury, a procedure, right? Oh, God, let's not call it a surgery. Yeah. What other kind of procedures are there? Was he getting a wart removed from his kneecap? I mean, come on, it's a freaking surgery. He had meniscus removed, which you and I know something about. Yeah. Um, not repaired, but removed, which I think is bad in the long term, but right. quicker recovery in the short term. Is that is that right? Yes, 100%. The deal with Embiid as well that I'm not going to skate over is the fact that the dude is – when when comparing uh, – Regular season performance to playoff performance. No. He is historically bad. I uh, understand. So I'm I'm not I have to take that into account. He's well. the anti-Jordan. <laughs> yeah. He's anti-Jordan, right? Well, or he's the big man James Harden. However, yeah, he's the big man James Harden. Big game James. The, he's yeah. the other big big man James. Uh okay, so we're we're on the same page in the East. Nobody else can sneak through. I don't think anybody else. Um, you know, I guess the Knicks or the Cavs, depending on how the seeding plays out, I guess the Knicks or the Cavs, you know, here's the deal. The Sixers may get the seven or the eight seed. I know. That is, for my bucks, not good. And for the Celtics, not what they wanted in round one. If you told me right now that a perfectly healthy, and again, I'm saying it'd be no setback, perfectly healthy Sixers were the eight seed, yeah. I would increase my bucks percentage from 10% to 11 percent oh jeez that's huge that's that's what she said but it's that huge. is a big uh that's a pretty big jump right there that well but yes here's my question for you with let's say philly and boston match up first round yeah is it favorable for Embiid because porzingis is not a physical guy or is it a problem because it means horford's going to play more who has always given Embiid? Some problems. I mean, as many problems as you can give somebody. Yeah. Just grabs and holds. You know? I just think Embiid's going to get worn down. I mean, it happens every year in the playoffs. Yeah. He just gets worn down. And if, to be fair, he has had some injuries arise in the playoffs. You know, but that's kind of yeah. part of basketball, staying healthy. Yeah. That's why the, the greatest of all time are generally been pretty durable people. You know what yeah. I mean? Yep. So, uh, hell, it's it's the only reason we talk about Stockton and Malone up in the, uh, you know, echelon. If they had done what they did for 11 years. Yeah. Nobody would ever speak about Carl Malone and Stockton. The problem is yep. they played every freaking game and did it for 18 years, you know? Yep. And so, you you know what? You earn that right. You earn that privilege. All right, Western Conference, this should be significantly more interesting. I wonder if our uh, our percentages are obviously going to vary. And, again, we, not, we have not discussed this. Yep. Uh, I wonder if our order is going to be similar. My first question to you, my, my friend, is how many teams did you assign a percentage to? Seven. Okay, I assigned it to eight, and I know which one you left out, but I assigned it to eight, <laughs> and the, the percentages dwindle quickly. But uh, I'm curious, your Nuggets percentage? Nuggets are number one. What's your percentage on the Nuggets? I I, um, I started at like 65, 70 percent, and I was like, you know what? I just really feel like, like, <laughs> gun to my head, Jokic is taking them to the finals, right? So I went ahead and capped it at 75% because wow. I just don't think anybody re realistically has a chance to beat that guy in a seven-game series. Um, although the, the irony is in the West, there are two or three other players who have been that guy. <laughs> that guy. Exactly. Right? Exactly. I know. That's the scary thing. And then there's another guy who we think – And hey, we got a couple more coming. Who are going to be that guy. Exactly, dude. Exactly. It's it's really interesting uh, that you say that. And the ironic thing about the West is there's one, two, 
guys, uh, three guys who have been that guy. There's two guys who we think are going to be that guy. And in the East, the team that we just gave 80 or 90% chance to win the East, we don't, I don't know if they have that, that guy. Great yeah, it's weird, right? It's weird. And a dude um, who really wants to be that guy. Yes. He, he's, <laughs> you know? he looks the part. He's played the part on occasion, and he yeah. came really close to getting one, right, against the Suns. So uh, it's awesome. The West, okay, give me your percentages. Start, Just start from the top, rattle through them, and then we'll kind of – then I'll do mine, and then we'll talk through it. Okay. And, and I am t- taking into account the fact that I don't know what's going to happen with Carl Anthony Towns with this. Well, okay, there's so one – we, we forgot something, and I don't know if you know this yet, but you listen to the Windhorse pod. Yeah. Kawhi got flown back to have his knee examined. I know. I know. Okay, we we would both agree. If there's no Kawhi, their oh. percentage is what? It's 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 gone. Zero. It's, they, they don't make my list. Yeah, they don't. Make they my list. they have a lesser percent than your Miami Heat, right? Cool. <laughs> Correct. Yes. Okay. That's, that's for dang sure. We assume um, healthy okay. Kawhi, but which is a big assumption. Go ahead. It is, and that's tough. Okay, so I have Denver seventy five percent. I have the Clippers next at 7%. Okay, 7%. Uh, because I, I bunched – You only got 25% to work with, my friend. I bunched, I bunched the teams together, right? Yeah. I have Dallas next at Whoa. 6%. And the reason why is, obviously, Luca, but Kyrie – I mean, just think about what Luca did with Jalen Brunson as his number two, Okay. Kyrie, at his peak, I think we would agree, as great as Brunson has been, is offensively better, more gifted than Jalen Brunson, right? So is he the best teammate he's ever had? He was, he was more gifted. Brunson's fourth in the league in, in the NBA at scoring. Very true, very true. Okay, but <laughs> the, the, let's just say this. Kyrie has never really backed away in the playoffs, right? He, I mean, he does not disappear in the playoffs, yeah. right? Okay, so I have Dallas at 6%. I have OKC at 5%. Okay. okay? I have uh, Minnesota and Phoenix both at 3%. And then I have the Pelicans at 1%. I will not put your Lakers in that. I don't have the Pelicans anywhere in here. They don't have a point guard. I I, I don't know how many times or how many years in a row I have to say the exact same thing. (laughs) The Pelicans do not have a point guard on the roster. Don't tell me Alvarado is a point guard because he doesn't start and he's a rotation guy. And don't tell me your guy, your hero, C.J. McCollum. There goes my hero. Green Bay or whoever's saying it. That's not the guy either. Foo Fighters, sorry. Uh, So here's my order. You ready? Uh, I don't have the Pelicans, but I do have the Lakers and Golden State splitting some percentages down there at the bottom, uh, equal percentages. But here's my deal. If you said on FanDuel there was a bet and it was even money, the Nuggets or the field, I'm taking the field. Oh, I'm taking the the field. Shit happens. God. Dang it, stuff will happen. So I'm taking the field. Oh, and so for that reason, that. You're saying that reason, I, I, I'm, I'm just being honest with myself. Do I yeah. think the Nuggets are the most likely? By far. But I think they're 50% likely because it's Nuggets versus the field. And, you know, everybody's given them too much credit for what they did last year. It's just one year. I, I just don't – there's not been a lot of repeat champions in recent history – I just think everybody's giving them a pass like, well, they did it last year, and they did. They were hot. They were on a heater, and they ran through teams. I just don't know, man. I don't know. I mean, I just don't know. I, I don't know. I guess we'll wait and see. I gave them 50%. That's a huge number in my opinion still. Let, let me uh, tell you why. Let me Before you continue with your percentages, let me tell you why I was so high on them. Because I think they're better this year than they were last year. Okay. Jamal Murray's been around the majority of the year this year, whereas last year he basically came back, you know, was – Got right in the playoffs, obviously. Um, I think Aaron Gordon and Michael Porter Jr., while Michael Porter Jr. is up and down, I think those two guys are better in their roles and they're more ready for the playoffs. Um, I understand, like, everybody wants to make this deal out of their, you know, Bruce Brown's Bruce not Brown, there, this, yeah. that, the other. Okay, whatever. I'm not that, – that dude's not moving the needle that much. And I don't think these other teams got better. I don't think the Lakers got better. I think Phoenix, we thought, was going to get a lot better. The Thunder got better. The Clippers got better. The Mavs got better. Right. And the Wolves got better. Well, well, here's the deal. The, the Mavs – well, the Mavs actually did get better. You're correct. The Mavs that. got a lot better. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay. Now, they, they sold the farm to do it, and they yeah. do okay, their future. And Minnesota are on my – I don't think they're ready yet. Yeah, Minnesota. I know. But I'm not going to be shocked, man. And OKC is the team that I'm not going to be shocked about. But guess who was on your I don't think they're ready yet list last year? 
Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so, it, that, yeah, nobody's, it. Yeah, hey, right. nobody's been there and done that until they have, right? Okay. Jump yeah. shooting teams can't win titles until the Warriors did 85 times in a row, right? So, question yeah. for you, real quick, because yeah. this is this is a, a minor storyline to me, okay? And I know I'm jumping subjects here. Do so, I haven't even finished my percentages yet. Go ahead. Do you think it's over? I know you have them on your list, but do you think it's completely over for Golden State? Yes. I do too. So why are they on your list? Uh, because I can't the, the same way you can't count out uh, you know the ghost of Max Struess and uh, Duncan Robinson down there in Miami. I can't count out uh, Steph Curry and a um, team that has actually won titles. Yeah, okay, I got you. That makes sense. And I, I, and Steve Kerr has been there, done that. They've all you know not all, but a lot of them have been there, done that, and. You just okay. you catch a cock. Like, I just I had to keep them on my list. They they get the same percentage as the Lakers. Stay with me. Here's my percentages. Nuggets fifty percent. Right. So I have a lot more percentage to work with for the other teams. Yes. Clip. I have the Clippers second, but only if Kawhi is healthy. Yeah. Of course. Okay. If yeah. Kawhi is perfect, no issues at all. I've got the Clippers at twenty percent. Okay. I've got the Thunder at ten percent. I've got the Wolves, Mavs, and Suns. I know that's weird. All at five percent. Okay. Okay. Right. Uh, I, in you know, and then I've got the Lakers and Golden State at two and a half percent each. And here, let me tell you why. This is another thought behind that is, and this may not make any sense logically at all, but I'm thinking to myself, well, the Nuggets. If we look at team standings, uh, if we're look, get off, get off here. If we're looking at team standings in the West right now, let's say the Nuggets finish, well, they could finish first, second, or third. Let's just say they finish first or second. Okay. That means they're probably playing the Lakers or the Golden State Warriors. That means the Lakers and Warriors only got to win one game. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, one series. No, no, one right. series. If they oh, yeah. somehow pull off that series, imagine how – you know, now you got 50% of my 75% of your projection now to, to divvy up amongst these teams because the Nuggets are gone. So, and I, I just believe that would build tremendous momentum. Now, the flip side of that is the Lakers and the Warriors, unless something crazy happens, not too crazy, but unless something different happens, if they, uh, right now they, they can't both get in. Only right. one of them can get in. So something would have to happen for both of them to get in. But uh, if they did happen to pull off that outrageous upset, right, over the Nuggets in the first round, and they could do it as a seven seed, they could do it as an eight seed. Yep. If that happens, um, then they don't have home court for the whole playoffs. So they would have to they would have to not have home court and win everything, which is basically what the Heat did a few years ago. Yep. I figure if Bam and Butler and those fools can do it, then I think that LeBron or Curry could somehow put that together. I don't think I, here's I don't think like to those guys I don't think home court is as big of a deal because it's it's about winning one road game and you flip it. So the other part to me is I want to be really clear about my percentages here. The, I don't have L.A. or Golden State on my list, obviously. Okay. Yeah. That said, if either one of whichever one of those teams wins that play-in game and then makes it or has a chance to make it, I wouldn't be surprised if. If they don't match up with Denver until the conference finals, I wouldn't be surprised if they made it to the conference finals. Okay, just because of the way the West is set up, I'm just You're just saying, saying no way they're getting through Denver. No way. It's, it's a terrible matchup. Yeah, Jokic is a terrible matchup when you have the best defensive player in the world in Anthony Davis, in my opinion, and he literally got embarrassed last year. And Jokic is probably better this year. Like, yeah. I just think I don't I don't see a well, prayer. Don't I don't want to get sidetracked, but right now, if you had to choose the best defensive player in the world, you're not choosing Anthony Davis. I know you, you need to choose the right. You, there's only one choice right now. Well, it's, it's women Yama. Yeah, it's women Yama. Okay, good. Uh, and and you saw, he, you know, he blocked Jokic. He blocked Jokic's shot four times in a game. It's only the second time it's ever happened in uh, in the history of Jokic's career. And Jokic also put up a paltry 34 points in the paint in the same game. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I guess if you're gonna, I guess if you're gonna put your chubby white shoulder into people's teeth, you're gonna get your shot blocked occasionally. I wonder how many of those four blocks he got right back and then half hooked his ass right back in the in the goal. Uh, and to be clear, let me just let me just cover myself here. I'm not. You guys know. Everybody who listens to this channel knows. I'm not a Lakers lover. I'm not a Golden State lover. I think yeah. both those teams are kind of cooked. But I gave him a two out of a hundred chance. Okay, yeah. so let's not yeah. overreact. 
I'm not saying it's going to happen. I'm just saying I give them a one in 50 chance. That's not good percentages. I just think that it's more diversified than, than nuggets. 75%. I just don't see that. All right. Uh, All NBA teams. Let's do it. You ready? Yep. I think our first team has to be identical. If it's not, we're going to take the entire rest of the show to talk about it. No, it's it's there, it's a clear cut five. It, it's a a hard stop after five. Clear cut, yes. not even close. I would not have guessed that two months ago, but due to injuries, due to not catching enough games, due to how players' performance has changed, uh, it's changed a little bit uh, yep. since then. So, give me your first team. Well, let me just tell you, Jokic, yes, yes, Giannis, yes, Tatum, yes, Doncic, yes, SGA, yes. Don't need to talk about anything else. That's it. Anybody my out there? Order, my order would be. I don't, it doesn't like, matter. That's MVP conversation. Save it for the video. Okay, got it. That's All basically right. the five top MVP candidates. Uh, that's exactly the five top MVP. Is it the top? Okay, yeah, there you go. So, um, all right. So, moving on to second and third team. And this does get a little bit tricky. And I will pull up some stuff to help us out. Give me your uh, second team one at a time. And again, positionless. I just want to reiterate positionless. Yeah. And by the way, if you if you're watching this video or you're listening to this and you have somebody other than those five, I want you to unsubscribe <laughs> from my channel. Yes. I do not want you to listen to us anymore. I don't want to, I'm just kidding. Comment and let us know who you have and why. I I just can't when you factor in team success and statistics, I just don't think anybody has as good as statistics or as much team success as the five we just listed. I just don't. Yeah. So it's just it's not there. So and anyway, I, give me give me. I'm wondering sentence. if there's ever been a year historically where it's been that definitive. Probably has somewhere, but I, I just I can't. This is but definitive. Again, but dude, think about this: the fact that it is positionless and it's that definitive makes it even tougher. It, you know? Counting stats, th- they're the top five. PER yep. and all the analytical crap, they're the top five. Yep. And team success, I mean, I'm looking at it. It's like first, second, first. Doncic is just freaky exceptional. And then first with a thunder, you know, I mean, you got Nuggets Thunder. Somebody's going to finish first. All right. Let's way, get two guards, two forwards and a center. I know it just worked out that way. All right. Second team. Yeah. Uh, I have Jalen Brunson on the second team, which I, I, who I struggled because I, I had him third team originally, but I, I have to put him on second team. He's he is finishing uh, with a flurry. We'll put it yeah. that way. I have Anthony Davis on the second team, which as do I. Okay. That's our first team. one that we both have. Okay. I have Anthony Edwards, obviously, on the second team. Uh, we um, both have him. I have Kawhi Leonard on the second team. And I have I do not. Kev- you do not. Okay. And I have Kevin Durant on the second team as well. Because if you go look okay. at if you go look at Kevin Durant's numbers, which I had him third team originally, I, and I then did. I went look at numbers. Holy crap. And defensively, he's been off the charts. So the numbers are, but here's the deal: the numbers are indistinguishable with Booker. Oh, exactly. no, they most certainly are shooting percentage wise. Oh, they most certainly are not. We'll go look at them together. We're going to go look at them together. They are not distinguishable. They are exactly what and what. They're very distinguishable. Oh, shooting we're going to get into that. We're going to get into that uh, because I've got, uh, I kind of cheated a little bit. So, my second team, I do have Anthony Davis. I do have Ant Edwards. Uh, I don't know how you could possibly have left Sabonis off your second team. I, I had him on I have originally. no idea. How. Like, it's, I had him it's on originally, and I, and I moved him. To third, I did. I know that's tough. That was tough. He's we, number seven overall for me. If you go based on statistics, like he, he, his statistics were they jump off the page. They were number insane. nine in the MVP voting right now. Like on is that, he? Uh, is he? Okay. You know, that they did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and and you, you can't give MVP to a king who's there in whatever place they're in. Right. Um, <clears throat> although we're talking about notches, um, I've got LeBron James in there. Yeah, I didn't. Uh, I, not on second because team. LeBron's numbers are better than Durant. No, they're not. Oh, yeah, they are. No, they're and not. We're gonna get there. You no, keep talking. Not. I'm going to go get it. They're not. Okay. It's silly. Durant, Durant's shooting splits are historic right now. Yeah. Okay. Keep talking. Go ahead. Go ahead. Name your third team. Oh, and then Halliburton was my Halliburton was my next one. Yeah, and I, I struggled with him. Had he not missed such a big chunk, he'd have been a lot. Well, he's not, had he not finished. Missed such a big chunk, he was trending towards first team at the beginning. He was trending towards first team. Him and SGA were going at it as the next great, you know, uh, not Doncic, next great non Doncic point guard. Uh, let's let's just get this over with, right? Why don't we pull up um, yeah. LeBron James and Kevin Durant? Uh, right. So same similar games. Durant's averaging two points more. 
LeBron's averaging more rebounds, three more assists, more steals, half as many blocks. He's shooting a better field goal percentage. Which it, which I didn't realize that LeBron was shooting that high. I knew he's he was shooting, shooting the same teams. percentage from three, essentially, 41.7 and 42. He's a terrible free throw shooter, always has been. Uh, LeBron has a better effective field goal percentage, and then he destroys him in the analytics. Uh, the analytics from a standpoint of offense. Okay. LeBron James has turned into one of the worst defensive players in the world. Well, they have the exact same defensive rating, 115. You, is that what you're going to do? Is that really – we're going to – Well, I'm just we, saying they have the same defensive rating. You've ever cared more. about defensive rating in your life. Huh? I'm I mean, just saying he's got more steals. they got the same defensive rate. That's great. Are you putting Kevin Durant on the second team because he's such a good defender? I'm putting Kevin Durant on the second team ahead of LeBron James because he's a better defender. Yes. Is it because he's worse in every single analytic? I mean, literally every one. <laughs> PER, worse. True shooting percentage is the same, but you told me his splits were uh, I think Kevin Durant is a better player than LeBron James is right now, period. I just disagree. I think Kevin Durant plays with Devin Booker and Bradley Beal. Otherwise, he – his numbers would probably be even more inflated. Okay, well, I think if LeBron James was on the Suns, they would be in first. Oh, no, I definitely disagree with that. Yeah. Okay, well, that's fine. I, and I'm, you know I'm not a LeBron lover by any stretch. Yeah. I'm just telling you, that's that's where I'm, that's where I'm at. So I've got LeBron. Let me get off here because I don't want to cheat and show you the rest of my team. So um, we've you got LeBron. The Booker Durant. You did skate over the Booker Durant comp, though. No, no, we're about to do that because on the third team, I didn't choose between the two, but I said I can only choose one. It's one oh. or the other. And let me show you. Uh, I will pull this up and we'll do oh, this. Oh, Booker didn't make your second team. I thought I thought you were saying he was on your second team. Okay. No, Booker didn't make my second team. I, I've got on my third team, I've got Booker Durant. I can't distinguish between the two because I really do feel like their stats are identical. I'm going to tell, tell you the biggest problem I had with my teams, okay, Okay. was the fact that I have two Lakers and two Suns. That was my too. biggest struggle. That conversation really had to be had. I've, well, I've got two Lakers on the second team, and they're in what, 10th? Yeah, it was my um, biggest struggle. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Durant's better. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Booker's yeah. Booker's doing a lot. He's carrying a lot because he's playing point guard. That's that's kind of the issue. Very true. Very true. Hold on. But, I, but, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, now Booker made my third team. Yeah. yeah. Did he? Yeah. He made my third team. That's what I'm saying. I had a big problem. I had two Lakers. You definitely Suns. did. Okay. Let's go third team. Let's knock it out. Let's knock it out. Because, I, you know, in hindsight, I'm thinking you might be right, man. Maybe I should have put Brunson over Halliburton. Uh, Brunson is definitely finishing on the uptick. Halliburton's yep. kind of finishing with a whimper. Yep. Um, I think Halliburton's numbers kind of fell off. He, he, We know he got injured, but I think his numbers kind of fell off once Siakam got there as well, right? I mean, I think bit. that took a lot of his usage and a lot of the load off of him, which is good for the team, but I mean, not necessarily great for, um, for the you know, for his numbers or whatever. The Pacers are in seventh right now. Right. They're definitely well. They they could avoid the play in. They're tied with your Miami Heat, so they could avoid the play in. They're exactly tied. Um, seventeen point five, seventeen point. Yeah, so that's something. All right, so thirteen. Get to me. Okay, so I have Sabonis on there. Obviously, I have Halliburton on there. Okay. Um, I have LeBron and Booker both on there. Okay. Um, and then I have Steph, even though Steph has crawled to the finish line. I have him uh, I have him on third team. Okay. So you had Kawhi second team. I've got him third team. Yeah. You had Brunson second team. I've got him third team. But I could be convinced to switch Burton, uh, Halliburton and Brunson. Yeah. I could be convinced. Uh, and I, we'd have to look at it. Uh, and then I've got Curry, just like you. Uh, and then I've got – uh, Durant. Okay. And then I've got Zion on my third team, which means uh, in my choice for that last spot was between Zion and Wimbanyama, which means I forgot somebody that you had. Oh, you have Booker and Durant. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have, uh, I have Zion. Uh, yeah. And, then, and I looked real close at him and Wimby. Um, and I want to give it to Wimby because I like him more, you know, uh, not that I dislike Zion and just, you know, um, but I couldn't do it. His team's just so god awful bad. Um, well, thinking about the fact that I didn't have a Pelican on any of the teams, you know what I'm saying? Like that was tough for me to have two Lakers, two Suns, and no Pelicans. Yeah, uh, I just, I don't know. I, I just think those guys are better players than Zion. I mean, well, I just, dude, it happens. I mean, when Detroit was winning the East with that, you know, team of good but not greats, you know, right. with Chauncey Billups and Rip yeah. and and Tayshawn and and Sheed and all those guys. 
I mean, we probably would never have had any of those guys on first team all NBA, but they were probably the biggest and the baddest dudes in the East, you know? Yep. So it happens. This is the way it is. The same way as uh, Jokic doesn't have an all star on his team. Right. right. For the second year in a row, he doesn't have an all star on his team. It's kind of like Dirk back in the day when Dirk won a title without an all star. Yep. Um, it, I, Zion's numbers were better than I thought, and he's finishing very strong as well. His last 12 to 15 games have been exceptionally good. Um, I do agree with you. Yeah, Durant is better than Booker. I looked a little bit closer. Jonathan, I want to look at Brunson and Halliburton real quick. Let's pull that up and look at it together. Let's just yeah. go ahead and compare those cats. Um, there was a reason. I feel like I compared this. Jalen. At the beginning of the year, Halliburton was – Running off way, way ahead, right? Yeah. Um, and like we said, he there was he was in MVP discussions at the very beginning of the year, dude. Halliburton's, oh, I mean, again, 7.8 in the 7.4 difference in scoring is a big deal, okay? That's a lot of points, right? That's like fourth in the league versus 24th in the league, but uh, more rebounds, almost double the assists, more steals, triple the blocks, a better field goal percentage. Yeah, but shooting splits are what and what. Look, I mean, they're almost damn near identical. They really are. So I, yeah, you know, they are similar. You no, know. um, and Brunson has dragged the Knicks to the finish line here. I mean, he really has. So. What about what about the coveted defensive rating? Brunson's is uh, yeah, better. That's not lower true. is better, right? Yeah, yeah lower is better. So Brunson's worry, better. And again. On either of these guys, I don't think that's something we need. To I don't. Want to, yeah, I don't, that's not why I'm choosing either one of them. Look at their offensive ratings; <laughs> those are way up there. Halliburton's really up there, dude. Yeah. Uh, per wise, uh, Halliburton true shooting percentage. Halliburton uh, yeah. rebounding, assisting, stealing, blocking. Uh, usage rate for Halliburton's way lower, which I never would have guessed. But that I, I'm telling you, I think that flipped when yeah, uh, Siakam came to town. Uh, better blocks plus minus VORP value over replacement. I mean, Halliburton's better in every way analytically. I don't know. It's close. Well, except for the fact that he averages seven points less a game. That's not close. You're right. <laughs> You're right. But it's defensive rating. It no, it's off the okay. no, no, no. All right. Uh that's it. Okay. So here are my uh I had I had a list of other guys that were sort of close. Who yeah. if you had to did you do you have some honorable mentions? No, I can come up with him very quickly. Wimby is he is he in the okay? He was he would have been my next in. Uh, I guess I just because they're so bad, I wouldn't put him that high. But yeah, if I'm just basing it on his productivity, sure, he's right there. Um, awesome. Even though Lillard has been down, he would be somewhere in my you know next probably six to eight guys. Um, Jalen Brown would be in my somewhere list, right? Yeah. Um, hey, I looked at Jalen Brown versus KD and Booker. Not even in the same conversation. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? Isn't not that crazy? even close. Yeah. Uh, Durant and Booker. I left one out, so one of them would be next for me as well. Uh, Chet is is close, although he's finishing very poorly as well. He's on my mm-hmm. fantasy team, and he's yeah. pissing me off. Um, his efficiency is way better than Wimby. His aggregates are not in the conversation with Wimby. Where did um, J Dub finish? Did he did he make your next group? Jalen Williams? No, he wouldn't be in my top 40. Jalen Williams would my top 50. Would not be in your top 50 yet, you don't think? No, not really? yet. I no. think he'd be in your top 50 for sure. Well, he wouldn't be in my top 35. Okay. All right. Uh, De'Aaron Fox, obviously, needs me in the mix. Yep. Like you would put Jalen Williams ahead of like Jimmy Butler or random dudes like that, would you? No, no, no not yet. Not yet. I was because I know you're a big fan of his. I mean, I love, dude, I love him. I mean, one day where he's going to be in this conversation for the top 15, no question about it. I mean, he, he just needs his own squad. Um, yeah. And I, you know, I listed guys like Moncaro and some of these other, like, uh, you know, and then I was looked at it again. I was like, well, I'm not, there's a lot of Moncaro's. Moncaro and DeRozan are kind of, you know, I like those kind of guys. Like, I don't even yeah. need to list all these guys, you know, Brandon Ingram and all that crap. So, uh, and then of course, Embiid's out because of games. Trey Young's out because of games. Yep. Um, there was a couple more, Jonathan, that were out uh, for games. Donovan, Mitchell. Donovan, Mitchell. Donovan Mitchell's out because of games, who would certainly be in this conversation. So we have pretty similar teams there. You've swayed me on the Durant over Booker deal, although I do want to reiterate, Booker has a lot of responsibility on that team. He does. And that, that takes a lot of the load off of, uh, off of KD. Um, okay, and then the last thing is narratives, dude. Let's talk about narratives. Yep. So I'll start. And I think the the most obvious one, in my opinion, is the fact that do the Celtics finally get it done, right? 
do they finally, they're supposed to on paper, right? I mean, they're, they're have certainly have the, the best starting five, probably the top six in the league. Um, but do they finally get past the, you know, horrible isolation possessions at the end of close games that lead them to not winning when you feel like they should win? Yeah. Um, you know, so that, that's my number one narrative is do they actually get it done at the end of the day? Why does the ball stick? Like, I mean, I get it. Playoffs are different. But, like, even in the regular season, I watched that game where they melted down the other day. It was against the Hawks. They lost two in a row against the Hawks. And it was the same damn thing in the fourth quarter. Like, the ball stuck. It would not move. I don't understand that. I mean, I, I really have grown to respect Missoula. I've heard him talk a lot. Like, I respect him as a human being and as a coach. He's sharp, dude. He, he's oh, yeah. going to be here. He's around for the long haul. Let's put it that way. Would we agree that the same narrative – still holds with this team in that they're two best players for different reasons, okay? One, because he's just not, like, super explosive, kind of stiff a little bit, and the other one because he can't dribble, that Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown do not very easily get clean looks on their own. And basically, if you look at teams in the past that have won titles, they've had a guy who goes and gets separation more easily than those two. Or a dump-it-in guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Historically, like they don't they don't have a dump it in guy. I mean, you could throw it into uh, Porzingis, but like he's not a. Right. I'm gonna put my back to the basket and get you. Like you know, I mean, he's not the fulcrum of an right. offense, is what I'm saying. You know, right. and I, I'm in, I'm including like Simonis is like a fulcrum. I mean, he's not a guy who's gonna go get you 35, but he's a dump it in guy where let's throw it to Simonis and run around like ants, and then he'll figure it all out. That's yep. what Jokic does too. Yep. Uh, and of course, Jokic can do everything. Right. Uh, so Celtics winning that one. Uh, how long has it been since the title uh, for Boston? Oh, eight. Okay. And that was the, the one of the big threes. It depending on who you asked. It's like the first big three, but really it's like the 35th big three. But people it's, it's, it's the first big three that was formed. Manufactured. Yes. First manufactured big yes. three. There you go. That's what we'll call it. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, although when was the heat? When did the heat win their deal in Miami? After. After, yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Um, uh, so, uh, <clears throat> realistic, these are realistic things, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's go back into the West, and uh, I can choose from two things. Let's just go ahead and choose the Denver Nuggets winning, which we both agreed was realistic. You said 75% chance to win the West, right. I said 50% chance to win the West. They did it last year. They've been there, done that. This is the one team that really, like, when when your only question mark is, well, they don't have Bruce Brown. <laughs> like, yeah. what? Who gives, who gives a damn, right? They've got Peyton Watson, who's probably better than Bruce Brown, and he's, like, uh, 11 years younger. Um, I, they really don't have any question marks, so it's not out of the realm possibility. They will run the tables and win this thing again. That gives Jokic uh, – we know he's getting his third MVP. When the, when the odds to win MVP are minus 2,000 at this yeah. stage of the season, yeah. you're winning the MVP, okay? Yes. The straw yeah. poll is what it is. It's yeah. not going to be wrong. Nothing could change that. So you're talking about, about a guy who's now a three-time MVP, three in four years. You've seen the list of guys that have won MVPs. We both think Jokic, if he wins an MVP and doesn't win a title, is a top 15 guy in the 12 right. to 15 range. If he wins the title, now he's got two titles. He's got three MVPs. He doesn't have any defensive players of the year, but he does vault ahead of Giannis, and he might be ahead of Giannis now. It just depends on who you are and how much recency bias you want to apply. Yep. Um, does that vault him into the conversation with Shaq? No, because Shaq has does that put him. Does that put him ahead of Olajuwon? Yes. Elijah one has two titles and one MVP. One MVP. Okay. That would give him three and two. Um, yes, it does. But you left out – You, I know you don't like defensive rating, but you left out one of the no, greatest defenders that ever lived. But if you're asking me who I want on my yeah. team to win a title, it, man, it's tough because I am as big a Hakeem Olajuwon fan as there has been. It is really hard – it's really hard not to have some recency bias because we're watching Jokic do right. this – and, uh, you know, an era, you know, you got to take era into account and all that right. kind of crap. Um, yeah, he's just a perfect incubator for this yeah. era. Like, Elijah Wan in this era would not have been any better than Elijah Wan in that era, in my no, opinion. But keep in mind this, too, okay? If Jokic flip the era, flip, flip where they are, okay? Yes. Put Jokic back in the MJ era, does he win? Does he win these titles? 
I don't know. That's, that can be argued as to why Elijah won, first of all, won the two that he won because he was, yeah. was gone and then didn't win more than that. Yeah. You know, so I don't know. It's, it's how you can look at it. Um, so that's my, that's my likely biggest narrative because you're talking about someone vaulting at, into the top 10 or near top 10. Yeah. He's definitely I mean, top 12 at that point, but top 12 for sure. Like he, he's not, he can't catch Curry. He can't catch Kobe yet. Even though Kobe's got one, right? One MVP. One MVP. Right. And then I mean, people like to you just look at that, man. Shaq's only got one MVP as ridiculous as that is. He's only and Nash has two. Exactly. And, and Kobe has one, right? Exactly. So yeah. Whatever. That's a tough one, man. Uh, okay, so give me another one. Give me another narrative. So <clears throat> I want to see um, – I think it is – it's going to be super interesting to see if it translates into the playoffs what the Suns decided to do with their roster, right? So they're the only team that pushed Denver at all last year, we would agree, in the playoffs. They didn't have Bradley Beal last year. Uh, they did have DeAndre Ayton, who – whatever. They did have a couple of other guys that mattered in their rotation. But to have three elite offensive players that can go get a basket in crunch time kind of when they want to is something that we have never seen a roster in NBA history have. There's not been one ever that's had three. Okay. Yeah. Um, now, granted, they're all perimeters, so that's a little different too. But the point is, will that give them a decided advantage in the playoffs? And can they overcome lack of depth, lack of rebounding, lack of all those things? I don't think they can, but yeah. I, I'm super interested to see. We haven't seen the best. We haven't seen them in their best environment, which is when the game slows down and it's half court and it's go get me a bucket – that's when, you know, the that that's when that's how we're gonna gauge this this decision for the Phoenix Suns to go all in with this truly offensive big three. Um, you know, and, and you're right. I agree. I mean, I don't think they're the best big three we've ever seen. No. But as far as getting a clean look in isolation, they may be. Yes. It, it may be, right? I mean, there's not one, there's not another one, man. I've I've gone and done the research. There isn't another one that has three that can just go get a clean mid-range jumper if they want to, you know. Over and over and oh Yeah, you're right. I mean, yeah. I mean, you got – yeah. Yeah, you're I mean, right. Dude, Bradley Beal on a bad team. Averaged 30, what, twice, right? I mean – Yeah, and he, he played is, point guard. He took Wall's position to play point guard while Wall was out for a lot of that season and put up all NBA numbers. Yeah, and he is a distant third out of the big three. And what he, about Harden – Kawhi and Paul George. People are going to be screaming at their monitor right now saying, dude, you got one right next to them that they may match up against. Nope. Because nope. James Harden is not that dude anymore. He's had a good year, but he's not that guy. Anymore. Yeah. His name never came up in our all NBA conversation. And I did look at his numbers because I was like, well, he's got to be somewhere lingering around 13. He's not. No. He's just not. Um, all right. My next one, uh, my next narrative, and this is other than the Bucks winning again and Jokic leapfrogging Jokic, uh, if you think Jokic just passed Giannis, Giannis winning a title right now would leapfrog him back, and it would give Lillard his first and put Lillard, you know, somewhere in there. That's a narrative that I'm, we're not probably going to discuss, but um, this is probably the next one that I would want to happen the most. The Bucks one, I'm a Bucks fan, so that's why I'd want that. But I would want the Thunder to win this thing uh, a year ahead of schedule. Yeah. Uh, and I, I, not that I think they're going to win it next year, but th we didn't think that the Thunder would be where they're at, contending for the top of the Western yeah. Conference standings. Yeah. Um, we knew Chet was going to be good. We didn't know he was going to be historically efficient. He would be rookie of the year in like 90% of the NBA seasons that have uh, you know occurred since George yeah. Mikan was wandering around on the hardwood. Um, you know, uh, But for Wimby, he's a unanimous Rookie of the year, right? You like he would be unanimous. Oh, for sure. The there's nobody else. Yeah, yeah there's nobody. And else. for for about two months there, it was an argument, but now Wimby has completely taken his deal to the next level, in my opinion. So, yep. Yep. Um, yeah, he's the clear rookie of the year. So the Thunder winning it because now you got SGA is now on the map. He's got uh, you know, it's like it's not checkmate, but it's like check against Doncic, check against Halliburton, yep. check against Brunson, yep. check against De'Aaron Fox, 
you know, all these other guys that don't have that deal yet, but they're all fighting for best point guard in the league status. Best, I should say, best young point guard in the league status right now. So, well, um, that, look, let me let me let me kind of segue into because my I have a storyline similar to that, but it is coming out of these playoffs. Who is viewed more favorably, SGA or Anthony Edwards? Yeah. Right. Who's because because they're the next two. We know it. Okay. Well, Doncic, Doncic is the next one. I, I think he's already there, dude. I mean, I really do. I mean, you you got Doncic up here. You got Ant and SGA fighting yeah. fighting for scraps. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I was just making sure we're not missing something there because I, 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 yeah, they're not in Lucas' category from that standpoint. From being the guy, you know how you know how Jonathan. We've never. I don't think there's a player in the top twenty historically. Like if you and I listed our top twenty, is there a player in the top twenty that doesn't have an NBA title? So you're thinking Malone, is he in your top 20? And I, I really need to go look. He we got, we'd have to put pen to paper. Yep. You get my point. Top yes. 15, top 18, all of them have a ring. You've got yes. to get a ring to validate it, whether that's good, bad. That's just public perception. Yep. It's the way it is. We live in that ring society, even yep. though I weight the rings less than some of the other things. Right. Doncic is the one player that I can conclusively say if there was a bet on FanDuel that Doncic would finish as a top 15 player of all time, I don't care if he gets a ring or not. I'm with His you on that. Numbers are going to yeah. be so overwhelmingly yeah. eye popping. Uh, and just how how much his team relies on him to do that, I think there's no way you keep that dude out of the top 15. He's one better in the playoffs. He's better in the playoffs <sighs> every year. So. That's, that's the best team he's had. Is this the best team he's had? The best supporting cast he's ever had? For sure. Okay. It, For sure. But it's and not it's enough. Still not, it's still not very good. <laughs> it's In better. It's better, but it's not enough. Right. So it, 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 when you look at it, like, is Kyrie better than Jalen Brown? No, not overall. Okay. Is uh, the third best player? Um, no. No, no, no. You see what I'm saying? Porzingis. Yeah. Right. Drew Holiday. Yeah. Derek White. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, agreed. we're not even in the conversation, right? Um, shit. For that matter, if you compare the Nuggets to the Celtics, they're not really in the same conversation either. I think the Celtics' most talented top six I've ever seen. That's just my personal opinion. Because I, I think their four, five, six is just crazy. I agree. And I, I think, look at it this way. It's the, just they don't have the crazy number one. He's, he, Tatum's not the craziest number one ever. Dallas has two guys that would start for Boston. No, let me take that back. Dallas has two guys that would play minutes for Boston. Maybe Gafford. Maybe, oh, maybe Gafford. Gafford, yeah. Maybe Gafford would. Yeah. But you know what I'm saying. That's it. That's that's how you look at it. And you could do that with a lot of other teams with those two guys. Yeah. Like, so that would be – that's the way I look at it. Anyhow. Well, uh, you want right. to do another – you got one more? I got one more. I got one more. Um, and I do – you touched on it earlier, and we talked about it yesterday, actually. I think it's important. The Giannis Jokic discussion, it's not, it's not really discussed right now. They're really not compared a whole lot. But they are on a track to be at the end of each of their careers where statistically – Giannis is off the charts, right? And Jokic obviously is as well. But when you talk about battling for titles and MVPs, they're a lot more closely related than people realize. And I think it's it's interesting to see that when Giannis won the title a couple of years ago, he was donned unquestionably the best player in the world. Yep. Right? The next year, Golden State wins the next title, and Steph now has talked about he's in the top ten of all time. But nobody's nobody's saying who the best player in the world is at that point. The next year, Jokic wins the title and is 100% called the best player in the world and still right now is, okay? If Milwaukee makes the finals, if they make the finals and they beat Denver in the finals, which you and I do not agree will happen, okay? <sighs> If that happens, what does that yeah. do for Giannis's legacy? Is he top ten right now? Well, I don't know if he's top ten right now, but that God, can you imagine how quickly that would flip the the public perception that Jokic is not just nudged past Giannis, but he's leaving him in the dust. Right. 
Uh, here's what I've got, Jonathan. And this is why it's fancy. In Louisiana, we have access to the internet. Uh, upon that World Wide Web, there is a site called basketballreference.com. Yes. Uh, it is the Bible. If you're watching the show and you don't know what basketballreference.com is, again, I want you to unsubscribe. I don't ever want you to come back. I'm just kidding. Uh, go uh, save it as your favorite. So on Basketball Reference, we're comparing Giannis and Jokic head-to-head. Who cares? It's 15 games. This is career games stats. Play. Yeah, career stats. Look how much green is on Jokic's side. Yes. yes. <laughs> That's a lot. That's a lot, dude. Okay, now do this. Go for this season. Look how much is on Giannis's side down here as far as awards. Accolades. You need to go to this year because I think that our viewers don't really realize what Giannis is doing statistically this year. Yeah, let's go do it. Let's do it. And and it's just been swept under the rug so much because mm-hmm. – uh, it's crazy. Just like what because Luka's what Jokic is doing is is more exceptional, Jonathan. It is. But just like what Luca's doing, people don't realize what Luka Doncic is doing statistically this year. Yeah. Like it, it is it is incredible to see. I mean, man, <laughs> it's crazy. Sixty one percent from the field. Almost sixty two. He'll be the first guy we heard the other day, right? The first guy to average thirty and shoot sixty percent in a yeah, year. Yeah, that's never happened. That's never yeah. happened. So, I mean, here's what worries me. Why is Giannis only blocking one shot a game? What's going on with that? I don't know, man. He's blocking point one more than Jokic. Come on, man. Yeah. Yeah. Because Brooke Lopez's big ass is hanging around the rim. So he he doesn't have anything to do. That's true. Scrape up. That's true. Um, But yeah, I mean, think about it, man. The dude is averaging 31 and 12, or almost 12, on 60% from the field. And a career high in assists, too. Look, we can get rid of that defensive rating once and for all because Jokic's is better than Giannis's. Okay. I'm, thank you. Or, I mean, is this what, that, that's what we're going to do. So from now on, we pay we, we we laugh at defensive rating, right? That's what we need to do. Okay, thank you. From now on, we get we need to laugh at that. Uh, <laughs> where did my Hollinger PER go? Hang on, let me pull this up. Uh, I want to go to – There it is. Look, here it is. 30 yeah, no, I want to look at ever. I want to look at all time. Uh, yeah. Best seasons, but anyway, uh, yeah, Jokic thirty one point zero eight. Giannis is right there, thirty point one seven, and then Embiid, of course, was averaging more points than minutes played, which <laughs> uh, and it's not like he had a bad true shooting percentage. He was pretty efficient, sixty four point four true shooting percentage. It's pretty good. Yeah, um, but it's funny because if you look at the true shooting percentages, usually it's going to favor big men, even though you do get extra credit for threes and crap like that. But right. look at SGA sneaking into the conversation with all these bigs. Yep, he's the only he's the only guard that's even remotely up there in true shooting percentage at sixty three point eight percent amongst the Giants with Embiid and Jokic, Antetokounmpo, and even some bonus down there. Porzingis six forty seven. Hey, um, what is wrong with your screen? It has Jokic averaging 28 assists and nine turnovers a game. Uh, I think that's like assist rate or something. Assist oh. ratio. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My screen's messed up, dude. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. It's got estimated wins added. It only does it for two people. I don't understand it. It's not, every time I pull this up, something weird happens. It's, yeah. It doesn't make any sense. But uh, anyway, uh, that's a wrap, man. That's a good yeah. episode. Uh, yeah. Some really interesting narratives out there. The only other one I'll throw out there here at the end is, um, you know, the forgotten historic great, uh, because he's so mercurial and because he's so often injured, is Kawhi Leonard. If he somehow pulls it out in that experiment uh, of bringing Paul George, uh, of bringing in Westbrook, and now of bringing in Harden, and bringing those four dudes together finally does pay off. That gives Kawhi, presumably he would get finals MVP, three finals MVPs, three titles, three different teams. And right now I think LeBron is the, is he the only person to get three titles with three teams. Who does Shaq win titles with? Just the Lakers and the Heat. That's it. Yeah, I think you're right. I think LeBron was the first person to win three with three teams. Well, uh, first st- superstar, I should say. Right. I'm right. sure there could have been a you know whatever, yeah. um, but uh, man, that would be uh, that would be an interesting narrative as well. And uh, it's just hard to believe that here we are, like seven games left in the season, and they got to fly him back from a road trip to have his knee checked on and inspected or whatever. So I haven't heard anything about that since then. Have you? 
I haven't, and I want I want to ask you this and get your take on it. And I think our, get our viewers to think about this too. Has there ever been a guy like Kawhi Leonard who, in this playoffs right now, even though we all we both have him second and or third team All NBA, okay, that we would so readily admit, no matter who else is on the floor, including Nikola Jokic, okay, that any given playoff game he could be the best player on the court. He could at any point in time, he could take over on both ends of the, and and just be a guy who st- look, career stats aren't going to be impressive. Like literally, he's going to be a dude that when you look at his career stats, you're going to go, is he a Hall of Famer, right? But at the end of the day, all the stuff that he's done in the playoffs will trump that. But I'm just saying, like, is there another guy historically that you could say that about? Yeah. That Jimmy Butler is maybe the only other guy in our lifetime that was yeah Jimmy Butler's the only other guy that's like well Reggie Miller was that guy you know I guess back in the 90s I guess right yeah you know the guy that was always way better in the playoffs than he was in the regular season I feel like a lot more guys stepped up back in the 90s uh and and amplified their statistics in the playoffs than than now but I don't know yeah yeah, you're probably it is harder to score, but they generally play more minutes. And so usually the numbers are up, you know, because they play so many more minutes. So Last question for you, and we'll get out of here. The Nuggets and the Celtics play in the finals. What percentage chance do you give the Nuggets to win? Well, you know, I picked the Celtics. I know. I'm okay. saying what percentage um, do you give the Nuggets to win? I, I picked the Celtics too. I would say 60-40 Celtics. Okay. That's about right for me too. Yeah. You, you think the Celtics over the Nuggets too. Well, I had, yeah, I've, I've picked them all year for sure. Okay, me too. No yeah, it, and you know, the fourth quarter stuff worries me and the ball sticking and all that stuff, but um, we'll see. Shoot, they're just is there any team better equipped to to scramble, recover, help, and close out on the shooters that Jokic is pinging the ball around to? Is there any team more flexible to switch everything? No, everything. There's, there may switch have been all, dude. Only Let's win team historically. There may be only one team, maybe two teams historically, if you talk about the Durant Warriors, if you put Draymond at center. But the Rodman Bulls, with when Rodman <laughs> played center, right, he, they could do those things. But yeah. yeah, there's literally not a weak point, though. That's the thing. Like, if you put Kukoc in that Bulls lineup, that's a weak, that's a weak spot, right? There's not a weak spot. Defensively. Yeah, on the Celtics. Not there's really not a weak spot that week offensively. I mean, Horford's where you first start to have your drop off, and he's just a catch a shooter now. Oof. Yep. Oh my God, I'm excited. You're getting me excited for the playoffs. I'd taken a little detour and started messing around with some soccer cards. Uh, who's your favorite soccer player in the world? Uh, Messi. He's the only one I know. <laughs> if I said I'm going to give you 100 Chinese yen, if you can name seven soccer players that are active in the world right now. Could you name seven soccer players? No. Be honest. Yes, you could. You can name is Ronaldo. Them. Is he still playing? Yes, that's two. Keep going. Ronaldinho. Yeah. Is Ronald, Ronaldinho uh, still playing? No, I think he retired approximately seven years ago. Okay. Does Freddie Patek or whatever his name, is that his name? <laughs> Freddie Patek was a little short second baseman that played for the Twins. You're thinking of Freddie I do. I, I do. I do. Yes. Sorry, yeah. my bad. Okay. Yeah. Right. Does he still play? Uh, he does not. No, no. I don't know. Nobody knows if he plays. I don't think he plays. No. Okay. Um, You're at two, Jonathan. I mean, yeah, can we a- name some American players? No. Can uh, we name the best American player that ever lived who's active right now? No. Yes. Christian Pulisic? Never heard of him. Never heard the name. Not one time. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> like, literally – Never heard the name. You know how they say soccer is worldwide? Just hadn't gotten here yet. It hadn't gotten to uh, metropolitan Baton Rouge, Louisiana. <laughs> hadn't reached your side of town yet. Damn. All I right. also cannot name one hockey player today. Yeah, you can. Can I? Dude, come on. I don't ever. I haven't watched a hockey game in like. Is Yarmir Yager still playing? No, but here's one thing I'll tell you. If you ask me to name hockey players from the year 1992, oh, I, can yeah. about, I can name about 50 because we I'm played in. 92 on the Sega Had Genesis. Squaw? Is he still manning a goal somewhere? <laughs> He's not. We yeah. wore that mother out on the Sega <laughs> Genesis. The, the, there were no grooves left on the, on the machine. Uh, we wore that thing down. We might have had to have bought a replacement 
NHL 92 for the Sega Genesis. The yes. first true great uh, console hockey game. Yes. And it, you, me, care. and probably six to eight others uh, were keeping stats in a spiral bound notebook, my friend. Yes. Yes. yes, and tabulating the league leaders by hand as <laughs> as necessary. And man, my life revolved around that. Now, you know, people, these kids are so spoiled with, you know, 2K and all that stuff. Like it keeps track of league leaders and all that stuff, all the statistics in the world that are like real. Yep. We used to have to do that by hand, John. Earl Weaver baseball, man. We Earl used to do it by hand and we would do it by yes. hand. Oh. Yeah, damn right. Oh. Yes. <laughs> all right. All right. You know what? That's another episode topic write that down best we're going to do our top five best pc slash console sports games in each sport baseball well, basketball I don't, I, don't, I don't have five in each do you think I have well, we five don't, in each sport? you you do because in football you got to predate madden and you and you and i both know yeah the first, oh yeah yeah, yeah, yeah one to rule yeah That's one it. to rule them all right yeah. Uh, baseball would be a very tricky one because there was a lot of baseball games that came out, a lot of different brands. Uh, basketball, I could name f- easily 15. Yeah, I think so. Before the who's 2K the better, era. Who was a better Tech Mobile player, Bo Jackson or Lawrence, Lawrence Taylor? Taylor? Who was better? Herschel was not – Herschel was no slouch, yeah. but it's – it's well, if you, you there's no extra points. You couldn't kick an extra point. point. You can't kick an extra point. Lars Taylor blocks, blocks every extra point. What are you talking about? He blocks every extra point. Yeah. You got Marcus Allen. You got Herschel Walker kind of well, nipping at the heels of the great Bo Jackson, but like Bo Jackson, dude. What are we talking about here? Yeah. What are we doing? You know? <laughs> All right. That's a great topic. That's our, I like that. That's a good topic. All right. Yeah. All right, cool. Uh, that's another episode of the books. Thank you guys for watching. We're right at an hour. Um, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. If you're one of the few people that is still listening and actually likes these episodes where uh, Pix and I talk about whatever having to do with the NBA and basketball uh, and non-card stuff, hit the like button because that's the only way we're going to get the word out to more people. Um, You know, one thing I think we do differently, Jonathan, is like we're not mouthpieces. Like we're not clickbaiting here. I'm not going to come out here and say, you know, Antoine Carr is my favorite power forward of all time or LeBron's not in my top 20. That's the kind of crap you get on Fox and ESPN and all that, and I'm, I can't stand that. Not it's either. so obvious when those dudes are doing stuff for clicks. The other day, okay, let me just ask you. My, <laughs> I don't know if you saw this. Okay. Most exciting college basketball players of all time. Did you see Stephen A. Smith's no. list? No. Who did he say? Well, just name a couple. Most exciting college basketball players of all time. He didn't go all the way to say Caitlin Clark is the most exciting. No, Caitlin Clark. We're not going that political. Like, no. These are his most players. exciting of all time. Um, did he say Shaq? Uh, I don't remember what he said. I just remember who he had number one. Who? It wasn't Michael Jordan. It wasn't Chris Jackson. Who was the most exciting player of all time, by the way. It, w- it wasn't Pete Maravich, who's got it. I mean, I didn't see him, but he's got to be at least in the conversation. If I told you that – Pearl Washington was at the top of his list. What would you say? Oh, That's so tough. <laughs> Where on your list would Pearl Washington be? Um, he'd be nowhere. he'd be right next to his twin brother, Mateen Cleaves. That's yes. where he'd be. yes, he would be. That's where yes. he would be. Yes, he would be, and somewhere uh, around John Bagley as well. Yeah. <laughs> You're thinking of every every doughy point guard ever. I can keep going. Kyle Lowry, Fred Van Vliet. You want to keep up. naming chubby point guards? I can keep. I keep going. Guys who have no definition. Guys who are a little heavy that played the point. I can keep going. Yep. Yep. Guys who are still good rec league players because they were a rec league player in college. <laughs> they played the rec league ball. All right, that's it. We gotta go. All right. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Keep collecting. Stay positive in the hobby. And peace. Pinkies are out.